What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another World of Warcraft video for the Warbitten, and today we are doing a profession tier list for gold making in the Warbitten. At this point we have now made videos on every single profession where we deep dive into one profession per video, and talk about exactly how to make gold with that profession, so if you've been watching along on my channel, you've probably seen that we have every single one of the professions done by now. We did them back in the alpha, and we have revisited them in the beta as well, to see what has changed recently recently and what has been added. So we have done full deep dives, about 20 minutes on every single profession, and I've been doing a lot of testing when it comes to which professions will be good and which ones will be let's just say a little bit less good, and for this one I want to make it super easy, super clean to follow, and you will get my thoughts on what will be a good profession to have, and what could be a less good one to have. If you just want to see the results, they will obviously be at the end of the video, and throughout the video we'll be going over every single one, every single prof profession that is, and talking a little bit about why it's good, or why it's less good. I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit short so it doesn't turn into a two hour video, but either way, once again, tier list today, I have made a tier list right here. It looks a little bit different, I wanted to call the names something else and just S tier, A tier, B tier and so on. So we have easy billionaire, easy millionaire, above average, pretty decent and could be better. And throughout the video we'll be ranking every single profession one by one and putting them into a tier slot and also uh, talking about why I put it there as well. And I want to hear, what does your tier list look like? Leave that in the comments down below. I would love to see this because professions will always be subjective. And even if I make my gold with tailoring, somebody could make more gold than me with engineering, even if I think tailoring is better. It just depends on how you use the profession you choose, and just, yeah, how you use it basically. You can make gold in so many different ways now. Now, real quick, before we get started with the tier list making, I do have a War Within gold making guide for those of you wanting to make even more gold in the War Within, where we once again deep dive into every single profession, talk about several ways to spend your knowledge points to maximize your gold making potential. Whether you want to be an active crafter, an active farmer, a cooldown crafter, any single way you can use your professions to make gold we cover in this guide and give you several examples, that way the profession guides will be relevant to pretty much everyone and we're talking both about crafting, farming and every aspect of gold making. In addition to that, when you buy my War Within gold making guide you also get my Dragonfight 1 for free in the same purchase, so you can use the Dragonfight 1 to keep making gold right now until the War Within comes out, and of course you will also get any updates sent to you for free Free. This is a one-time purchase, and to sweeten the deal one more time, like you also get access to a private gold making community where I will give you guys early access to videos here on YouTube, and also some exclusive videos as well that will never go live. So back in Dragonfight, for example, we had several ways to make hundreds of thousands of gold per hour, and we printed millions of gold on a couple of videos that never went public, which we'll try to replicate once again this time. And if anything, like gold farms as well, you will have access. With them before they go public, which is usually when they have the most profitability behind them because they tend to either get over farmed or nerfed when they go public. Either way, once again, the link to the guide will be down below in the video description and the pinned comment. And for anyone who buys the guide, thank you so much. The support really means a lot and helps me help you out even more. So I'm going to try to keep this video somewhat short and to the point, but we're going through 11 professions here, so it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer one either way, because I do want to talk a little bit about every single one, and highlight the different ways to make gold with that profession. We're going to start with tailoring, which has always been one of my favorite professions, like tailoring plus alchemy has always been my top two pretty much, and it's no different this time, like tailoring is still super amazing. If you play Dragonflight, a lot is the same, where you have, um, you can make gold through unraveling for example by specking into unraveling and getting that at quality 3. We do have a brand new resource in the War Within that counts for every single profession which is concentration, allowing you to guarantee quality 3 on certain crafts every single day, which makes pretty much all your alts useful, because now you can use your alts to guarantee quality 3 on certain crafts by spending your concentration. The more alts you have, the more gold you make. Anything with a quality suddenly becomes an alt crafting cooldown. 
Now for tailoring specifically, you have a lot of different ways to make gold, and I can highlight four to five different ways to make gold right now. You have one spec that is specced into looting cloth, so you learn how to do first of all. You will find more cloth when you farm in the open world, or inside dungeons like killing humanoids you will just have a higher chance to get cloth, and get more cloth at the same time. And you will also start to find the weaver cloth balls, you will find higher quality, so like at the end here, you have a chance to find weaver cloth from humanoids by 25%, and you will find higher quality cloth as well, when you are farming. Then you have, um, like, this, well, that, well, that's one way to make gold, you can farm gold with tailoring by farming humanoids and getting more cloth. Method number two is going to be crafting gear, as you can see here we have a bunch of crafted gear that you have access to from tailoring, and even though they are bound when picked up, people are going to be uh, putting in crafting orders for these, because they want to have them. Like, even if you don't have tailoring, you can have access to these bracers right here, if they are good for you and then I can craft them for you. And the higher quality I can guarantee here, the more commissions I will get paid. So for example, if I spend my concentration here right now, we can guarantee the highest quality for whoever is purchasing these bracers. And then, because we can get it to a higher quality, aka higher item level as well, they will pay more. So tailoring gold making method number two will be centered around just crafting gear, so once again unlock as many different recipes as you can, and then start crafting gear for people at the highest quality that you can as well. Gold making method number three for tailoring will be based on uh, cooldown crafting, so going into from dawn until dusk you will get access to two separate cooldown crafts, that is right here, we have dawn weave bolt and dusk weave bolt. Maximizing this one you will have 30 available crafts and they recharge on a cooldown basis, so a couple of days cooldown you get like about 3 to 5 crafts back every single day I believe, based on dragonflight and they have individual cooldowns, which means I can do 30 crafts in dusk weave right now, and then go to dawn weave and do 30 crafts there as well. That makes tailors a really good alt gold making army to have, so you can just log in every single day or twice like once per week, two twice per week and stuff like that, and make these bolts and you will usually make a profit, it just depends on how many knowledge points you have, but once again just spend everything in from dawn until dusk and you will make a profit from those crafts as well. Once again we dive deeper into exactly where to spend your knowledge points in my gold making guide, so you can know exactly what benefits all of your crafts here to maximize this profit even further. Next up for crafting or for making gold with tailoring we have the different bags we have access to. So you have the severed satchel right here to increase the maximum yield of castle gar and raveling. And you have a profession bags for every single profession. Going down here we have this one for example for um we have this one for alchemy, we have this one right here for inscription, and you have one for every single profession. Once again, they are bound when picked up, but people are going to put in crafting orders for these, so the, the method number four to make gold with tailoring will be to get as many recipes as you can, and start making these bags for other people. Finally, for tailoring, we also have the option to start making spell threads, and certain goods within tailoring, that's going to be spell threads, and you also have the option to make finish reagents and sell directly on the ocean house, you have the polishing cloth to sell directly on the ocean house, and you can specialize into making bolts of the highest quality. That way you can for example specialize one tailor into making quality 3 bolts, and then send those bolts to your other tailors to further use those in crafts. Or alternatively you can make quality 3 bolts and sell them to other tailors, that way you will make a lot of gold, and this is not something that is capped, you can sell 10,000 bolts per Per day, if not even more. So this is a really good way to make gold and it's something that not a lot of people talk about, just having a tailor specced into making bolts at the highest quality you can, with the highest amount of resourcefulness and multicraft, and then selling those bolts to other tailors, it is a ridiculously good way to make gold. It just depends on which bolts that people will be looting in the open world, and how much quality 3 will be selling for. So long story short, tailoring is going to be absolutely insane in the war within, just like it was in Dragonflight, and could even potentially be slightly better in the war within as well. So for me, tailoring is an obvious easy billionaire, like it's all the way to the top, and you can make gold in so many different ways with tailoring, and you can make so much, it is literally uncapped how much you make, and you can have um, gold making armies set up, you can have a farming character set up, you can have a bolt crafting character set up, you can have finishing reagents crafting characters set up, 
up to you, and yeah, so many different ways to make gold with tailoring. Next up on this list is alchemy, and I do promise I will try to go through things a little bit faster this time. Tailoring is arguably the biggest profession to go through, and talk about different ways to make gold. For alchemy, a lot of things are the, are, are the same, like you, know, you can make harmonious horticulture, which believe me, specking a character into making this at the highest quality will be insanely profitable. You can sell that to other alchemists using it in further crafts, and they want this at quality 3. Once again, skills in, Dragon, uh, in the War Within are way more important than they were in Dragonflight, and getting to make the highest quality, it takes a lot. Even now I have spent way too many knowledge points, I don't have any profession tools or accessories, so getting those could guarantee the highest skill, but for the most part you will be spending concentration to get quality 3. This right here is very similar to the uncommon crafting reagent, we had access to crafting in Dragonflight as well with alchemy, which I personally made millions off of that alone, so specking a character into making this at the highest quality with multicraft is definitely going to be good. After that you have the regular stuff where you do experimentations to learn recipes, and then you can make potions and flasks and files based on the recipes that you get from your experimentations. You can then spend your knowledge points to either make better potions, better flasks, or increase your chance to get recipes from experiments. So you can spec into, for example, alchemical mastery, fantastic flasks, potent potions, or even thaumaturgy. Now alchemy can also be used in a gold making army setup through thaumaturgy, or transmutations. So whenever you are doing thaumaturgy, sometimes you will loot something called a gleaming transmutagen, or you can also loot different types like these ones right here, and the different types of mutagens, which can then be further used in different um, crafts, and you can see we have 8 out of 8 available crafts, they recharge on a cooldown on a daily basis, so making this one for example right here, we can make this right now, making one ominous transmutation, we suddenly got a lot of um, transmutations back, we got some gleaming ones, we got some gloom kitten, chitin, whatever, and some herbs, and you can do this once again, on one of them recharges in 21 hours at the moment, so getting all 88 crafts would take a week. Now these are pretty easy to understand, you just get these transmutagens whenever you are doing thaumaturgy act, and you can use them in transmutes that gives you materials back, and also gives you more transmutagens as well which you can then further use in further transmutes later down the line, and doing something like for example you can transmute this as well, this is a diamond used by jewel crafters, so you can turn 18 gleaming transmutagens into that, which means you can directly turn this a bound when picked up crafting reagent, which is a remarkable byproduct of performing transmutations, you can directly turn that into gold. But this is going to be a limited resource that you can also use for, for example, this, the Gleaming Chaos, which if I do that right now, we still have six crafts available. Once again, this is on a cooldown basis. You can see we just got a lot of materials from this one craft, a bunch of materials. Like we got four Weaver Cloth, we got three Blessing Blossoms, three Arathor's Spears, and five Iron Claw Ore. This is once again on roughly a 21 hour cooldown as of right now, but you can also, instead of turning 40 of them into that, you can turn 80 of them into a Blasphemite and sell that on the auction house. Now, you can once again also focus on crafting flasks and potions of the highest quality, which tends to be really profitable, but also a highly competitive market, but if you can get that to work for you, you can make a bunch of gold from that as well. Now, for all of these reasons that I just covered, alchemy is a really good profession, but for me, it is not enough to go all the way up into S tier. That being said, it's an easy millionaire, so basically A tier in this case, right underneath tailoring, and once again, Again, don't get me wrong, you can get alchemy to work better than tailoring for you specifically, it just depends on how much effort you put into it. So for example if I put all of my effort into tailoring but you put all of your effort into alchemy, you will obviously make gold with alchemy, they're both really good professions here, but for me if I put just as much effort into both, I believe I would make a lot more gold with tailoring myself. 
Next up we have Inscription, and Inscription hasn't really changed much in how you make gold with Inscription compared to for example Dragonflight. That being said, there is one pretty big change that does, it, it, it's pretty remarkable. So if you spec into Archival Editions, then go into the Dark Moon card route, something you will see is that you will no longer learn how to make Dark Moon cards. You will, however, learn how to transcribe them. So Inscription is now a farming profession because you can can start looting cards. So you can for example spec into archival editions to have a higher chance to loot cards. Over here increase your ability to find cards by 50%, over here as well 50%, and 50 times 4 up for a total of 4 no, 200%. So you can start finding Darkman cards inside the Delves, dungeons, and even in the open world, making it an actual farming profession. You can obviously also use it to make gold from crafting, you can still transcribe cards, and transcribing to an ascension for example now requires an ink and also a different card than ascension that you can then turn into ascension. Transcribe two of the same Darkman card into a card of ascension if that is the most profitable one. And specking that with resourcefulness you sometimes save one of those cards as well, which could make this a legitimate way to make a bunch of gold by turning the least valuable card into the most valuable card. Now you also have reagents that you can make and this is kind of like what we had in Dragonflight. We, I, I made a bunch of gold selling reagents because once again what you will do here is you will have a scribe specced into making these reagents at the highest quality you can and then you will spec into multicraft to get multiple procs to then sell those procs and usually you make gold per craft and multicraft just gives you even more gold so for me I would put one, um, one um, scribe into fully specced to just have skill points and as much multicraft as you possibly can so there are a couple of ways to spend your knowledge points here in both pursuit of knowledge and perfection to make that work for you that way you will get a bunch of skill and as you can see whenever I'm making this for example the codified greenwood I have 475 skill and we only have a lesser tool and no accessories so getting the best tool I can and the best accessories we can almost guarantee this at the highest quality possible in which case you can sell reagents and even inks and you can even mill to get quality 3 pigments well I can't really get quality 3 but I can get somewhat close when I mill for example here milling quality 3 we get really close to getting quality 3 here as well now once again we are so close at getting the max level tool and the max level accessories could push us over the edge to get guaranteed quality 3. So you can for example mill quality 3 pigments, turn it into quality 3 ink and then sell that ink to other scribes using it in other crafts. Once again skill will be really relevant in the Warbit Inn so you want to have quality 3 on all of your reagents pretty much all the time to guarantee as much profit as possible. So making inks, mill Building herbs and even selling reagents to other scribes is gonna be insane. Apart from that, you can also make weapons as a scribe, you can make missives, for example, which is really good, and profession equipment. Now, one more way to make a little bit of gold all the time as a scribe is by making the profession treatises, which everyone will want one of these per week, well, two, but like one per profession per week, and they will put in crafting orders all the time. You will see public crafting orders private crafting orders and even something called a patron crafting order so you can make these on a patron crafting order as well even though they won't really be that profitable but as you can see here by making the tree ties on engineering we get 66 gold and we get a bag, a stack of pentagold reviews, and a rune, a augment rune. So yeah, those are going to be really good as well, another way to make gold with the inscription, and inscription is going to be really good for gold making. And if you ask me, like on my tier list, I'm going to put it right next to alchemy, and for me specifically, I believe I can make more gold with inscription. So for me, I would do inscription first and then alchemy, but believe me, they're super close.
Next up we have Enchanting as well, which I personally right now have on the same character as I do in Inscription, which might not be a bad plan by the way, even for your main as well, being able to disenchant epics and get more crystals back whenever you do Mythic Plus, and then looting cards whenever you do your regular gameplay, so Enchanting plus, en uh, pl plus en uh, Inscription might not be a bad combination to have on a character you play a lot. That being said, for Enchanting you have, um, it's, it's pretty much the same as always been, you you can shatter essences, you can make reagents, mana oils, rods and wands, and then obviously enchantments. When it comes to how I make gold with enchanting, I usually focus heavily on enchantments, so weapon enchantments specifically, and also profession tools. I have made a bunch of my gold from profession tool enchantments, and getting those at quality 3. In this case, you probably want to get to the point of making quality 2, and then spending your concentration to guarantee a quality 3 from quality 2 crafts. That way you can make a, a lot of gold by get people getting the best tool that they can, and then wanting the best enchant that they can on their tool as well. So for example, you have deftness enchant, you have fin finesse enchant, you have ingenuity, perception, and resourcefulness, and I even think I have one that we haven't unlocked yet, so you can enchant enchant all of the different profession tools as well, with a bunch of different enchants. Then you also have illusions, you have the ring enchantments, and you obviously have the weapon enchantments. Once again, I make most of my gold with weapon enchantments, and also profession tools to enchant those, so you put those onto a vial, and uh, a volume I mean, and then you put that on the auction house. Once again, get to the point of guaranteeing quality 2, and then spend your concentration to get that to a quality 3, and then sell those quality 3s. It's going to be a really good way to make gold, and people are going to be hunting down artisan security to get their tools, and when they have a blue like rare quality tool, they will want a quality 3 enchant, and people making quality 3 enchants, they will make absolute bank. Now, all of this being said, I've given enchanting a lot of praise, in which case my ranking here might not make a lot of sense, but I'm going to put enchanting into above average. Once again, it's really good to make gold, but I want to say that the market is really saturated, and is also being heavily controlled by certain people. It is a market where people can make a lot of gold and manipulate the market as well based on when Mythic Plus seasons begins, and based on when Mythic raids begin as well, even heroic raids. So you will see a lot of market manipulation when it comes to enchanting, and it's a really gated way to make gold, kind of and it's also very non-scalable, you can make a lot of gold with it, but it's very much less scalable than something where you can make a bunch of reagents used by other professions, and um, yeah, it's a lot less scalable, a lot more competitive, it's difficult to get into, but if you can get it to work for you, you can make millions, but once again for me it's above average. Alright, next up we have Jewel Crafting. Jewel Crafting is going to be a lot of the same in the War Within as it was in Dragonflight once again. You have the aspect of crushing, you have uh, prospecting as per usual, so you can prospect um, different ores to get, for example, precious gems, but you will then destroy the ores that you're prospecting. When it comes to crushing, you can learn how to, you can spec into making crushing better for you, giving you more stuff back from your crushing as well. So for example, you can crush the gems that you already have and you will get way more stuff back when you are specced into crushing. You also have a profession bank that will then teach you to get more and better stuff from crushing as well, plus you can use your concentration here to get quality 3 whenever you are crushing. Apart from that, you have the basic reagent you can spec into making to make the highest quality possible, plus spec into multicraft to get also more stuff back from your usual craft. So you have all of those available to you, you have the aspect of making vials, and making vials is going to be a good way to make gold because for me as an alchemist I want quality 3 vials to be able to make the highest quality potions flasks and everything else that I make and in order to do that we need high quality reagents when we're crafting so for example if I now, right now put this one to quality 2 instead of quality 3 so we do like this suddenly we have 112 skill but if we go for quality 3 Instead of 112, we have 173, so going from quality 2 to quality 3 is a difference between the quality 1 to quality 2, 
up until quality 2 to quality 3. It's a huge difference going from quality 3 materials for quality 2 to quality 3. So for me as an alchemist, I need, and I repeat this, I need jewel crafters to make quality 3 vials and sell those to me. This will be a really good way to make gold by specking into enough skill to guarantee this into quality 3, alternatively use your concentration to then get quality 3 vials back, then spec into multicraft or resourcefulness to get more materials and save more materials while crafting. Now, once again, concentration will be a limited resource, so right now we are spending all our concentration to make a couple of quality 3 vials, but at the start, this could be really profitable, and this is also really scalable. Then you have the aspect of jewel crafting that is making gems, this is also pretty good, pretty scalable, and you can then make gems around raid openings, mythic plus openings, seasons starting, or huge patches. You can also make Algari Ember Prism, you can make jewelry, and a pretty big part of um, uh, jewel crafting is making profession equipment, which requires you to spend a lot of knowledge points into that specialization tree. So for jewel crafting, we have um, gem cutting, we have jewelry crafting, and we have shaping. You want to choose exactly where to spend your knowledge points, for what version of uh, jewel crafting you want to make gold with. Do you want to focus on profession equipment? Well, good, go for jewel crafting. Jewelry crafting. Do you want to focus on cutting gems? Well, obviously, you want to go to gem cutting. Do you want to focus on, for example, crushing? Well, now you want to go for gem finding. This will allow you to sometimes find various gems when doing prospecting and also crushing. Now, when it comes to, for example, profession equipment in jewel crafting, you have access to a couple of really good ones. You have the novelist specs, which are for inscription. You have the um, what it is, Forger's Font Inspectors, which are used for, once again, inscription as well. You have the Loops, which are used for jewel crafting, which is, well, you in this case, or other jewel crafters as well. And you have the Enchanter Crystal, all of which will be really useful and in really high demand. Apart from that, you also have access to the PvP items, so this one, for example, a Bind When Equipped PvP item, and being able to craft this at quality 5 will definitely be profitable as well. There's so many different ways to make gold with uh, jewel crafting, and it's a really good profession to have. That being said, it is not enough to bring it all the way up to um, S tier for me. It's not enough to bring it to the top, but when you think about all the different ways to make gold with jewel crafting and how scalable this is, like once again you have access to a bunch of reagents that you can make and then sell it to other people. Gilded vials, they are used by jewel crafters. Uh, they, they, they're made by jewel crafters, and then used by alchemists, so every single alchemist wants these, but you are the one making them. You also have the gem cutters that you can make, you have the marbled stone that you can make, there's so many things made by jewel crafting. I would highly recommend having one jewel crafter specced into making reagents at the highest quality possible, and then maybe specking into multicraft to get some additional procs while crafting as well, so having a tool with multicraft, having accessories with multicraft, and then just maxing out your skill to get quality. Three. It's going to be insane. Now, once again, it's not enough to go all the way up to the S tier for me personally, but for jewel crafting, I would put it at easy millionaire. That being said, I like inscription more, but this one is really up there as well. For jewel crafting, I'm going to put it right there. For, for me, this makes sense. I do believe that a skilled jewel crafter could make more sense, so I'm going to put it above inscription. Yeah. Next up, we have a profession that I personally, before Dragonflight, never liked to have for gold making, and I barely used it in any expansion apart from Warlords of Draenor, like, which was long ago, but we're talking about engineering, and engineering in the Warbird Inn functions a lot similar to how it was in Dragonflight. You basically invent stuff, you get parts back, and you can focus on making different parts that are then further used by engineers, which gives you a couple of ways to make gold. You can make gold by inventing, and then getting more stuff back from inventing, and making, for example, the brand new mount that we have access to. So, for, um, for us, we have access to the Crowd Pummeler 230, and you can try to find these parts. A lot of these parts you will learn how to find while doing your inventions, or you're scouring through scraps by specking into that. So, for example, by putting knowledge points into the inventing tree, 
you can focus more on both inventing plus parts, and when you learn parts, whenever you pilfer through parts, you now have a chance to recover components used to craft the Crowd Pummeler 230. This gives you the ability to once again pile through, pilfer through parts, and let's just pilfer through this one for example. So going through pilfer all, sometimes you will get piles of scraps, in which case you're burning gold every single time, but sometimes you will get for example bountiful bolts, and in this case we now made gold, or we can use these bolts to actually craft them out for a cheaper cost, instead of buying these from a vendor. So now as you can see, we get them quite a lot as well, the Bountiful Bolt, so we get them on pretty much every other craft, and we tend to get between one and two of them. So you will get a bunch of those bolts, and once again scrolling down to the mount itself, you can see it requires a thousand bolts. Like, it, it, it requires a thousand bolts. Making this bound, it's gonna take time, and uh, yeah, it's gonna take a lot of time. You will have to burn through a lot of gold, but this scrap you will once again use in, for example, scouring through scraps. In which case, let's do that right now, we have a couple of scraps, we can scour through that, and sometimes when scouring through scraps, you will learn a brand new recipe. So for example, in this case, we got the unrecognizable prototype, and the two hastily scrawled notes. Sometimes you even get materials, or crafting reagents, that you can either use and slash or sell. Now if you ask me, that's just the boring part of engineering, which to be honest making a mount isn't boring at all, but everything else is just so interesting to me. Being able to make parts, this is so scalable, and it's something you can make a bunch of gold with by just focusing on making parts, and then selling those parts to other people, and as an engineer, if you focus on making parts, there's a lot of gold to be made by getting these at quality 3 and specking into multicraft. So for example, you have the Chaos Circuit, a crafting reagent, which is used by engineers in their inventions. You have the Entropy Enhancers, as you can see here, once again, engineering craft material, you have this one, the safety switch, you have a Gaia rating gear as well, hopefully I said that correctly, I have no idea, you have the handful of bismuth bolts, and then you have the whimsical wiring. So as an engineer, if you focus on being able to craft these at the highest quality you can, you can sell them to other engineers that then further use them in, for example, making cogwheels, wheels, devices, the mount, you name it, like anything they want to make, they want to have the highest quality uh, parts they can have, and if they spec into, for example, devices, explosives, or anything else, they will not be able to make quality 3 parts, and they will need somebody else to supply them with quality 3 parts. You can be that guy, specking into parts, then selling those parts to other engineers. If that's not your kind of thing, you can go into cogwheels, in which case you will want somebody else to supply you with the parts to get quality 3 parts, and then you can turn that into quality 3 cogwheels in this case, and there's so many different cogwheels that you can make, and they are so relevant, and they're so good, and they can make you so much gold, and another good thing is that these cogwheels can be sold directly on the auction house, no crafting orders, just smack them on the auction house, and it's such an easily scalable selling operation that you can make a bunch of gold with. It is going to be ridiculous. Apart from that, you also have access to professional equipment, for example. Now, these two are just the boring ones. If you spec into it, we can scroll down. You have access to this one, a engineering uh, accessory, as you can see here. So you have this one, engineering accessory. You have this one right here, which is for fishing. So you're making a accurate fisher friend, a fishing tool that everyone with fishing will want to have, and also everyone wants to have fishing, so that's great. You have this one, the summer flange, which is used for engineering as well. You have the mining headgear, you have the accurate clamps used by jewel crafters, right? That's a tool they have. And you have the mining one once again, and you have this one, the spring loaded accurate fabric cutters. And if you have watched my tailoring video, for example, you probably know that a bunch of people will be having a lot of tailors for their gold making alt army and on their gold making alt army the first tool or accessories they want to have is this one so there's a lot of potential gold to be made by being able to craft this at the highest quality possible as soon as possible, especially if you can guarantee a certain stat, because on my gold making army uh, tailoring characters I want to have this tool at quality 5 in the highest quality possible with multicraft.
and anyone who can guarantee that, I will pay you gold. I will pay you tens of thousands of gold in commission. I will supply everything and pay you like 30,000 gold commission. Easy. So focusing on profession equipment when it comes to engineering is definitely valid and is a great way to make gold. Now if that's also not your thing, you have a bunch of devices, many of which are sellable that you can make and then sell to people, and you have potion bombs, like uh, different bombs, but you have potion bombs of power. This is a splash potion that you can sell to people and they can then throw. It's a potion bomb. That's insane. You also have the potion bomb of recovery that gives them healing and you have potion bomb of speed. These will be used so much in mythic plus scenarios, both the speed ones and the power ones. So this is a definitely good way to make gold as well by focusing on explosives. Now, once again, I try not to go too in-depth in this video on every single profession, because I have covered all of them before. So, for example, we have a, um, not, not not here, but we have a engineering video from the past. We have one for alchemy right here, for example. Then we have this one as well for engineering, where we cover pretty much everything for engineering. That being said, engineering is looking absolutely ridiculous, and I'm going to put it all the way up into easy billionaire. Now, I still believe that tailoring is better, and I will make more gold with tailoring, but engineering and tailoring is super close, and they can be on a shared first spot, basically. Now, at this point, we have gone through every single profession a lot up until now, like the ones we have covered. Now, it will start speeding up, because these are... There's a little bit less to say about them. So first of all, we have blacksmithing. Blacksmithing, there is a little bit to say about because we have a brand new thing called Ever Burning Ignition, which is technically the Ever Burning Forge. If I forge one of these right now, actually we have one in the bags still, right? But this is a cooldown craft. And if I craft one right now and then we apply one when we're crafting, when you spec into it, you will get certain benefits from that. As you can see, we just got 230 ingenuity, 230 multicraft, and 255 resourcefulness. That gives us a 30 minute window with a bunch of additional stats that we can then use to make gold. It basically gives blacksmiths a window of opportunity to make even more gold. And for the available crafts, they do recharge very fast, but even then you want to apply this before you start crafting. Apart from that, you can smelt alloys, so you can spec into smelting alloys at the highest quality you can, and then sell those alloys to other blacksmiths, or you can focus on crafting armor, or weapons, or professional equipment. For professional equipment, you have a lot of good stuff. You, for example, have this one, you have this one, and you have a couple of the ones that I haven't learned yet. So you have the skinning knife, which everyone with skinning will want to have. You have the pickaxe that anyone with mining will want to have, and you have the sickle that everyone with herbalism will want to have. You have the leatherworking knife, and you have this one as well, the leatherworker tool set, and you have the needle set. Once again, referring back to my video on tailoring all to gold making armies, they will want to have this one. You have the PvP gear you can make, and you have the embellished gear you can make, and you have different types of framework and stonework, all of which can definitely help you make a lot of gold. That being said, it's very similar to Dragonflight, and I don't recall blacksmithing being that good in Dragonflight. And having spoken to everyone that I know with blacksmithing as well, they also said it could have been better. So it could have been better. It definitely could have been better. In which case, we're going to put it down to... Uh, well, actually, it could be better, but it's pretty decent. It could be better, but it's pretty decent, and it's very much a um, copy and paste from Dragonflight, with the addition of the ever-burning forge mechanic from Dragonflight as well, but blacksmithing is really capped on how much gold you can make, and it's not that scalable, and you're focusing on weapon crafting, armor crafting, or professional equipment crafting, which, don't get me wrong, that can be a lot of gold, but the alloys, for example, that's not going to be that much gold, because there's no cooldown attached to them. So the only profitability in crafting alloys will be based on you specking into crafting alloys, then also getting the forge. So for example, means of production, and then alloy crafting all the way here, and then ever-burning forge. 
to get those benefits and then specking into multicraft to get that benefit as well while crafting and then start crafting alloys and sell those to other blacksmiths. That could be a valid way to make a bunch of gold, but how much can you make compared to the other professions? To me, once again, it's pretty decent, but um, yeah, it's gonna be there. Next up we have leatherworking, and leatherworking is going to have a lot of the same problems that blacksmithing has as well, where for example the reagents you're making here, they can be looked at as the alloys of leatherworking, where you're turning different materials from skinning into different reagents, further used by leatherworkers for example, and in some case tailors I believe, to make certain gear, like for um, gear crafting. So for uh, leather workers, you can focus on making reagents to either give yourself or other leather workers then further their craft. So you have one way to make gold by making reagents at the highest quality you can, then specking into multicraft to proc more of them as well. You then have the option to either make leather armor or male armor. So you have the rune branded right here, and then you have the glyph edged right here. You can also learn Arathi patterns and Nerubian patterns and Bestial patterns, which will also be, for example, this one male, and then you have this one, which is, well, uh, let me scroll down. This one is leather. So you have both male and leather in those patterns as well. So once again, you make a decision on either making leather armor or male armor and then making gold through crafting orders, guaranteeing this one at quality 5 with the right stats and then selling it to people that has this on their best in slot list. Then you can make professional equipment that we already have a couple of, so we have the alchemy cap for example, all of these that we have here are regular trainer taught recipes that you can sell on the auction house, and they're bind when equipped. Now if you spec into professional equipment, which I highly recommend if you're going down that route, then you can also learn to make really good ones. So you have the, this one that is rare for leatherworking, you have this one, the scrap master gauntlets for engineering, deep trackers cap, and the pack, so you have both of these for skinning. Then you have um, Earthen Forge Master's apron for blacksmithing that you can either use yourself or sell to other people. You have the Earthen Jeweler's cover for jewel crafting. You have the Alchemist hat for alchemy alchemists, and then you also have the Herbalist pack for herbalism. Now, you can make a bunch of gold with this, but once again, you can see it's bind when picked up, so you'll be making your gold through crafting orders, guaranteeing this one at quality 5 with the right stats, and then advertising that, and getting a crafting order, then getting a commission, and making your gold based on commissions. That is usually a lot less scalable than just making something, and posting it on the auction house, and for the most part, leatherworking is a copy and paste, from Dragonflight. Based on that, like for me, it's not gonna have the highest rating, and once again, I will say it verbally that it could be better, but I'm not gonna put it all the way down here. It's gonna be right next to blacksmithing. So, blacksmithing and leatherworking are both pretty decent. Not good, not bad, just pretty decent. Next up on the list, we have skinning in this case, and skinning is gonna be, well, very much the same as it was in Dragonflight. I have recently leveled from level 70 to 80 on the beta with skinning as well, and skinning is looking pretty good overall. I mean, all you do is skin creatures. That being said, there are a couple of additions to the Warbit Inn that I'm personally really excited about, and that is the addition of a brand new items that we haven't really seen before that are used in certain crafts, and I don't believe we have any of them available here, but if we go over to leatherworking, we should have a couple of them available for a couple of the crafts that we can do here, that will, will require a really specific reagent that you will find through skinning. So, for example, if I take the tier list away for just a moment right now, you can see that a bunch of the weapons that are crafted through blacksmithing they require something called a superb beast fang, superb beast fang, a mighty fang obtained from a particularly powerful elusive creature on the castle gar by skinners can be bought and sold on the auction house. Now this leads me to believe it's either skinned by a rare or one of those traps that skinners can now learn to make that now traps elusive foes, and by maxing that out they can start learning how to find these fangs, which are used in crafting epic items, and it's also an epic crafting reagent found 
by Skinners. To me, that is a pretty exciting thing to see, and I want to see exactly how rare these will be in the essence of things. And skinning is also a little bit more scalable than something like herbalism plus mining, for example, because you can skin in a group now. You can do 2x4 farming with skinning. You can do 5-man farming with skinning. There's a lot of possibilities you can do with skinning instead of just killing mobs one by one alone. You can be in a 5-man party, 2x4 party, and you can also make gold solo as well. You can go for the higher quality of skins, higher quantity of skins. You can loot meat from skinning, bones from skinning. There's so many different things you can do with skinning. It's quite exciting when it comes to farming. That being said, it is exactly that. You're farming, so you're directly trading your time for gold. Meanwhile, when it comes to crafting, like the professions we have covered so far, you're more so trading your knowledge for gold, because you can make a bunch of gold per hour, but you have to know what to make, how much to make, when to sell and how to sell. So it's way more trading your knowledge and wisdom to make gold rather than directly trading your time. When it comes to farming, you're just trading your time. That being said, for farming, skinning is pretty decent and I would put it up here. Now, finally, at the end here, we have mining plus herbalism, a couple of professions that I'm really familiar with myself, and I use them in every single expansion, and the Warbitten is no different, definitely gonna use them here as well. That being said, this is the professions where we are directly trading our time for gold, and it's a lot less scalable than, for example, skinning, because skinning, you can increase the profitability yield by being in a group, but for mining plus herbalism, there's not really any group farms. Now, with the seeds, being revived and um, like seeds being relevant again in the war within there could be some group farming possibilities right there like getting seeds together then having a seed raid or a seed group to um, get herbs from seeds that could be a thing but for the most part herbalism plus mining is a soul adventure you just pick them up fly around loot things and the thing is these two professions are heavily botted as well heavily inflated by bots but it's still a good profession to have. Everyone, like for example mining, ores are used by engineers, blacksmiths, and jewel crafters. They're used by three professions, and herbs are used by alchemists and scribes. So these are very in-demand items, and will be a good way to make gold, and if you're, if you're a solo player, it's really good to have, but once again, you are directly trading your time for gold, and they're both basically copy and paste with some new names from Dragonflight as well. So overall, you fly around and loot things, and uh, Herbalism plus Mining, for me, will go into the could be better tier here, because once again, you're directly trading your time for gold, and wait... Did I mess something up? I definitely messed something up here. I put mining, dude, I'm so high. I put mining instead of leatherworking. Or I put skinning instead of leatherworking. Yeah, dude, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing stuff and things. I'm doing stuff and things, for sure. So this is the final list. We have herbalism plus mining at the bottom here. Then we have blacksmithing, we have uh, leatherworking, and we have skinning. Enchanting, jewel crafting, inscription, and alchemy, and tailoring plus engineering. So this is a list that I can be pretty happy with. Like once again, I don't mind herbalism plus mining. Plus I use them a lot myself, but they're just very not scalable. And um, yeah, they're really competitive. They're really heavily botted. Not the best could be better. And I'm kind of sad to see the copy and paste from Dragonflight. Kind of technically, they're very similar. So at this point we just say that me putting mining instead of leatherworking was a intentional doing on my part to see if you were paying attention and definitely not a mistake from me, right? Either way, you probably scroll to the end anyway to see the results. So here they are. The results are in tailoring, engineering, jewel crafting, inscription, alchemy, enchanting, blacksmithing, leatherworking, skinning, herbalism, mining in that order, from best to worst, based on my experience, based on the beta testing, and based on my thoughts so far. So once again, 
Let me know what your tier list looks like in the comments down below. Check out my War Within gold making guide for access to even more gold making information, where I once again deep dive into every single profession and give you exact examples of how to spend your knowledge points for the different ways to make gold. We have about three to four examples for every single profession, so there's a lot of paths to take here, all of which can be profitable. Either way, Thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you again in the next video very soon.